Hold on. Oh, no. Councilors, I hereby call the November 12th, uh, 2019 City Council to order. Please stand. We'll salute our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Councilors, please stay standing. Please stay standing, everybody. Um, I'm going to take a moment of silence, yesterday being Veterans Day, uh, for those that served our country, for those that paid the ultimate sacrifice, and also for uh, Brockton resident, World War II veteran, Pearl Harbor survivor, Mr. George Hersey. Mr. Hersey passed away last week. His services will be this week. Our thoughts and prayers are with him, his son Dennis, and Mrs. Hersey. Moment of silence, please. May he rest in peace. He was a true hero. Councilors, we also want to recognize two of our newer colleagues that are going to be sworn in January 6th. Uh, Attorney Rita Mendez, Councilor Lodge. <laughs> Attorney Jeffrey Thompson, Ward 5. And I'm going to ask uh, the two councilors, please come up here and join us up here. And again, well job. Well job, well done on campaigning. And I do want to take this moment, councilors, we, we can all be seated. I do want to take this uh, moment um, to congratulate everybody that ran for office. Uh, and I also want to uh, applaud everybody that was re-elected. Um, you know, I'm going to be leaving the council to go on to a different endeavor, uh, but as the mayor-elect, I'm going to be working with each and every one of you. As I said, and all of you uh, echo the same sentiments, we're all in this together to better Brockton. It doesn't matter if you're a city councilor, or a school committee member, or the mayor. This is what it's about, so I do. I, I'm really proud of my colleagues on the council. I say great, great additions. Also, uh, Council Adrita Mendez, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Tina Cardozo will be joining as well. So, um, job well done. With that, we're gonna move on Mr. to the- Mr. President. Yes. I'd be remiss if on behalf of the council, we didn't congratulate you on your election as mayor. Thank Congratulations, you. Congratulations, you did great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, stop that, stop it. Uh, so, um, thank you, Councilor. Thank you. You are my favorite Wood One Councilor. Uh, I do also want to say that uh, the Wood Two Councilor Thomas Monahan had indicated to me via via email. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to join us tonight. So, with that being said, uh, we'll move on to the agenda, please, Mr. Clerk. We have the ex acceptance of the minutes of the October 28, 2019 City Council meeting. Accepted and placed on file. We have a hearing. Petition of SMG Commercial Stephen Glass, 62 Old South Main Street, Middleborough, for a transfer of garage license located at 50 Meadowbrook Road, Unit 7, in City Clerk's Office, August 6, 2019. Hearing is signed for November 12, 2019, 7 p.m. All paperwork on file. Fire Department has no objections. Time having arrived, I declare this hearing. Uh, it was continued, correct, Mr. Clerk? No. no. This is an open, a brand new one? Right, okay, yeah. Scrivener's area here on the uh, agenda uh, is open. If there's anyone here, please come forward to the podium. State your name for the record. Attorney Creedon, please. Good evening, Your Honor. Congratulations. Thank you. Tonight, the first three uh, agenda items that you have are a garage license, a motor vehicle repair mechanical license, and a mo motor vehicle uh, auto body license. Concerning the garage license, it's 50 Meadow Brook, uh, with the old Sergeant Supply Building, which uh, unfortunately, the licenses are intact now. Uh, they're in the wrong name because um, Mr. Glass, who is here, is the true owner of the property. A garage license must go with the garage license. So in order for us to transfer the garage license and the other licenses to my clients, uh, the license has to go to him first, okay, from uh, the uh, prior property owner to us. Uh, and that's going to happen. I suggest to you right away. Um, it's uh, it's been we've had at least two meetings down there with Deputy Williams. Uh, one because we received a transfer of the used car license in, in uh, October, uh, and uh, part of the <coughs> request that will be in the next couple of licenses from uh, Councilman Castro for certain conditions. 
of my clients have signed that they would obey those conditions. I won't do that until we get to the next, uh, next hearing. Um, that's basically the garage license situation. Again, I can tell you the present license is good through April 2020, so it's not in illegal sense in that, sen in that sentence. Thank you, Attorney. But it's got to get into the right ownership. Thank you, Attorney Creedon. Any questions for Attorney Creedon? Anyone else here in favor? If you're in favor of this, please come up, state your name for the record. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Stephen Glass. I'm the owner of SMG Commercial uh, of the building, closed in 2015. I apologize, I just didn't uh, realize that it had to come and be transferred to me. My attorney, my closing attorney didn't uh, inform me. So, no, it was not you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Glass. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else here in favor? If so, please come up. Just for the, just if you could state your name for the record. Thank you, Mr. Berkowitz. Anyone else here in favor? Third and final time, seeing none, that part of the hearing is closed. Anyone here in opposition? Anyone here in the chamber in opposition? Third and final time relative to this agenda matter. Anyone here in opposition, seeing none, that part of the hearing is closed as well. Matter now is uh, on granting, questions on granting. All in favor of granting? All opposed? Motion carries, hereby granted. We'll go on to the next agenda item, please. <clears throat> Petition of ICC Incorporated DBA Insurance Collision Center, Inc. <clears throat> at Middleton Santos of 8 Cushion Avenue, Apartment 1, Boston, for a transfer of motor vehicle repair mechanical license located at 50 Meadowbrook Road, Unit 7, in City Clerk's Office, September 6, 2019. Hearing is signed for November 12, 2019, at 7 p.m. Time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. If there's anyone here in favor, kindly state your name for the clerk. Thank you. Good evening again, Mr. President, and through to the member of the council, Attorney Jake Creedon, 71 Legion Parkway, Brockton, representing ICC, uh, who to this date is owned by, the business is owned by Norm Berkowitz. That's being <coughs> transferred, uh, I might add, through bank financing, above board uh, situation, as soon as these, uh, these, this paperwork is out of the way. Uh, they had a commitment, and I've met with the Council of Castro, who's asked me to go over what would be conditions, and I'd ask permission to approach her vote on certainly this license and the next one. The motor vehicle repair, as you know, is just auto body repair to mechanically repair autos. Uh, and uh, there are stipulations and conditions in there where the repair vehicles can be versus where the used car for sale things should be. And all that's been agreed to and signed by both the corporate uh, entities that Admelson uh, and, and Jose, both of whom are the new uh, transferees um, have agreed in writing and signed and dated uh, those conditions. Would you identify yourself to? Yes, my name is Edmilson Santos. And I'm you're in uh, favor? I'm in favor. Thank you. You're in favor as well, sir? Yes, sir. Jose Cardoso, 37 Claremont Ave, Brockton. Thank you, sir. Anyone else here in favor of this? Anyone here in favor? If you are and you want to state your name, please, again, you have to come up to the podium. Norman Burke was 152 Dean Street in Easton. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here in favor? Certainly, yeah, again, Stephen Glass of SMG Commercial. Uh, well, home address, Middleton, Mass. Business here, 50 Meadowbrook. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am? Good evening. Good evening. Elizabeth Berkowitz, 152 Dean Street. Thank Southeast you very much. Side. Thank you. Anyone else here <coughs> uh, in favor, seeing none? That's third and final time. That part of the hearing is closed. Anyone here in opposition? Anyone here in opposition? Third and final time relative to opposition. That part of the hearing is closed. Council, <coughs> do you have any questions on this one? <coughs> I have no questions, and I would just want to say that Mr. Berkowitz, <coughs> the current owner, um, has cooperated fully with Deputy Chief Williams from the fire department and me um, in getting the place ready and bringing it up to speed, and um, I, I think we're in good shape. Thank, Thank you. you, Councilors. Any other questions, Councilors? The question is going to be on granting, Councilors. Do you want to do the stips? Are you reading the stipulations in on these? Do you want me to read them out loud? Or do you want to just submit them into the record as, as I'll, stated? I'll submit them into the record, yeah. There are 16 of them. You can make that in form of a motion. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the stipulations as set forth here. Second. 
So motion on the floor is properly seconded. All in favor? All opposed, that motion carries. The stips are hereby accepted into the record. Now, uh, the question is on granting with the stipulations. All in favor of granting with the stips, please raise your hand. All opposed, motion carries. It's granted with the stipulations stated. Thank you. Thank you. We'll Thank go on to the uh, fourth agenda item, please. Petition of ICC, Inc., DBA, Insurance Collision Center, Inc., at, <clears throat> at Middleton Santos, excuse me, Cushing Avenue, Apartment 1, Boston, for transfer of motor vehicle repair body license located at 50 Meadowbrook Road, Unit 7, in City Clerk's Office, September 6, 2019. Hearing is signed for November 12, 2019, 7 p.m. All paperwork <coughs> is on file. The Fire Department has no objections. Time haven't arrived. I'm going to declare the hearing open. If you're here in favor, kindly state your name for the clerk. Evening, Mr. President. Attorney Jake Creedon, 71 Legion Parkway, Brockton. Again, this is the auto uh, body license, which is the same as a spray booth, you know, to, uh, to be able to do that. And they are licensed. Just for the council's uh, information, those booths are checked. Board of Health checks them. City um, Building Department is supposed to check them so that they comply with all of the environmental laws, uh, both state and local. Again, the stipulations that we, you just voted on the other ones, I believe ought, ought to be on this too, uh, Councilor Castro. And I can tell you that a good three quarters of them are things that are involved already in our ordinances, in state law, and uh, some of the more beneficial ones for the city are the publicly showing where the spaces are, uh, and the times of operation and, and those things which will make the operations of those businesses in the city of Brockton much, much better. Thank you, Attorney Creedy. Anyone else here in favor? If so, again, if you could kindly come up, state your name, just for procedural. Good evening. Elizabeth Berkowitz, 152 Dean Street in Easton. Thank you. Norman Berkowitz, 152 Dean Street in Easton. Thank you. Mr. Glass. Yes, thank you. Stephen Glass, SMG Commercial, 50 Meadowbrook Business. Thank you. Thank you. Milson Santos, 8 Cushing Ave uh, in Dorchester, Mass. Thank you. Jose Cardoso, 37 Claremont Ave, Brockton. Thank you. <coughs> anyone else here in favor? Third and final time. Anyone here in favor? That part of the hearing is going to be closed. Anyone here in opposition? Anyone in the chamber in opposition relative to this matter? Third and final time. Seeing none, that part of the hearing is closed. Councilman Castro, do you want to make a motion on the steps? Yes, I want to make a motion to accept these stipulations to this license. And how, how many stipulations are there? There are 16. 16 as well. Fourth here. Okay, and Councilor Lally made a second on that. So motion on the floor, properly second. All in favor, accept the stipulations. All opposed, it carries. Now the matter is on, a question is on granting with the stipulations attached there too. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. It's granted with the stipulations attached. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, members much. of the council. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you. We're going to go on to number five, please. Report of the Real Estate Committee for its meeting of October 30th, 2019. That is accepted and placed on and file. A communication from the interim superintendent of schools requesting a supplemental appropriation to school department's fiscal 2020 net school spending budget in the amount of $2,258,845, which represents the Chapter 70 increase in the final fiscal 20 cherry uh, sheet, net of the charter and school choice uh, revenue and expenses. Also requesting a supplemental appropriation to the school department fiscal 20 non-net school budget in the amount of $6,178,493, which represents the amount originally requested for the school year and is needed to continue the busing services for the students of the Brockton Public Schools and New Heights Charter School. Accept and placed on file. I have a communication from the mayor recommending the same. That too is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Also accept and placed on file. I have a communication from the acting chief of police requesting authorization to expend grant monies related to the fiscal 2019 law enforcement based victim specialist program from the Office of Justice Programs, Office for Victims of Crime, any amount of $270,000. Accepted yeah. and placed on file. 
from the mayor in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Laws recommending that the City Council authorize the acceptance of expenditures any amount of $275,000 from the U.S. Department of Justice, Office of Justice Programs, Office for Victims of Crimes, Physical 2019 Law Enforcement Based Victim Specialist Program Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 2019 Law Enforcement Based Victim Specialist Program Grant Fund. These funds will be used to fund the salary and fringe benefits of a victim advocate for the Brockton Police Department for three years. The award would also be used to purchase a laptop, print, a laptop printer, filing cabinet, and office supplies for the advocate, and funds will allow for the department to enter in a procurement contract with Family and Community Resources, Inc., to provide services to domestic violence uh, victims. No match is required. Accept and place on file. Communication from the mayor recommended the same. That too, accept and place on file. CFO relative to the same. Accept and place on file. From the mayor in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Laws recommending the transfer of $4,500,000 from health insurance employee benefits to non-school spending. Accept and place on file. <laughs> from the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the proposed transfer of $4,500,000 from health insurance employees' benefits to non-net school spending. Council, is that too is accepted and placed on file? We have a communication from the mayor in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, recommending the following appropriation of $790,000 from unappropriated estimate receipts for fiscal 20 of the general fund to non-net school spending, $500,000, police department purchase of services other than contracted services for the purchase of new police cruisers for the traffic division, $150,000, public property purchase of services other than contracted services for feasibility and design study for the Little Red Schoolhouse at Brockton High School, $50,000. War Memorial purchase of services other than contracted services for office renovations, $30,000. Finance Department, Department Repair Equipment for renovations and move of the Finance Department, $30,000. Animal control, purchase of services other than contracted services for a design study for a new building, $30,000. Accepted and placed on file. Location from the CF, CFO relative to the same. That too, accepted and placed on file. Communication from the DPW Commissioner requesting that the City Council authorize the acceptance and expenditures any amount of $68,000 for the Mass Department of Environmental Protection Sustainable Materials Recovery Program Grant to the Department of Public Works Refuse Division Sustainable Material Recovery Program Grant Fund. These funds will be used for city solid waste and recycling programs. No match is required. Accepted and placed on file. Another communication from the mayor recommending the same. That too, accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Also, accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the mayor in accordance with the general laws of Massachusetts, Chapter 44, recommend that the city council authorize the total appropriation of $5,457,233 using the form of water with language as recommended by attorney Richard Manley of Lock Lord LLP. The city's bond council in order to provide funding through borrowing said amount is to pay the following costs. Cemetery department capital 650,000 for cemetery expansion. Fire department capital 1,260,000 for two fire pumper trucks. Information tech capital 448,000 for information technology software, computer equipment, radio dispatch, microwave, and GIS. Department of Public Works, Water Division Capital, $1,126,233 for U.S. Filter, CPL Treatment Plant, Water Main Replacement Program, Parks and Recreational Capital, $1,973,000 for various capital items. That's accepted and placed on file. Okay. Is uh, from the CFO relative to the same. That too is accepted and placed on file. Uh, from the acting chief of police department, request the authorization to accept, expend additional subsequent grant award, any amount of $13,380.64 from the Plymouth County District Attorney Office, Fiscal 17, Violent Gang and Gun Crime Reduction Program. Grant to Brockton Police Department Fiscal 17 Filing Gain and Gun uh, Crime Reduction Program, Project Safe Neighborhood. 
grant fund. These subrecipients grant funds will pay for overtime incurred by detectives of the Brockton Police Department conducting night light rides with parole. Adult probation and juvenile probation officers. These funds will also be used for overtime incurred when detectives and or officers of the BPD conduct hotspot patrols and other activity required by the Plymouth County DA's office. There is no match required. Counsel is accepted and placed on file. There is a <clears throat> recommendation from the mayor. Accepted and placed on file. And CFO relative to the same. That too is accepted and placed on and file. From the mayor's office, director of social services, request that the city council authorize the appropriation of state legislative earmark any amount of $50,000 from the Department of Public Health, Bureau of Substance Addiction Services, legislative earmark funding to mayor's office, legislative earmark funding fund. These funds will be used for Champion Plan. Since February 2016, the Champion Plan has helped 795 individuals and made 1,285 placements into treatment, providing follow-up services. No match is required. Accept and place to file. Uh, communication from the mayor recommending the same. That to accept and place to file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Also accept and place to file. Communication from the DPW commissioner requesting the city council authorize the acceptance and expenditures, any amount of $5,000 for the Mass Department of Environmental Protection, Mass Electric Vehicle Incentive Program, Grant to Department of Public Works, Mass Electric Vehicle Incentive Program, Grant Fund. These funds will be used to purchase one battery electric vehicle. Accept and place to file. Indication from the mayor recommending the same. That too, accept and place to file. Indication from the CFO relative to the same. Also, accept and place to file. Communication from the mayor appointing Ralph Sorelli, effective November 7, 2019, as interim commissioner of buildings and public properties for a period of 60 days for the city of Brockton, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 4161A. Accepted and placed on file. <clears throat> Order that the sum of $4,900,000 is appropriated to pay costs of sewer system rehabilitation work, including, but not limited to, projects designed to address sources of exfiltration, infiltration, and inflow, and sections of undersized pipe, and for the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto. And that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow set amount under and pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 7 and 8, or pursuant to any enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore. In Council, October 15, 2019, ready to refer to Standing Committee on Finance, that report was favorable. The City Council on October 28, 2019, passed to a third reading by hand vote. Council, the question is on adoption by roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrancourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's 10 of the affirmative. Order is hereby adopted. Order in order to delete section 2 141, Wage and Personnel Board, in its entirety. In Council, September 23rd, 2019. Ready to refer to Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable. In Council, October 28, 2019. Passed to a third reading. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrancourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? No. Nicastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's nine in the affirmative, one in opposition. Order received by adopted. An ordinance amending the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton, Chapter 23, Water, Sewer, and Sewage Disposal, Article 3, Sewer and Sewage Disposal, to add reference to best management practices and also to amend Section 23 through 38 through 23-92. In Council, September 23, 2019, ready to refer to Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable. In City Council, October 28, 2019, passed to a third reading. Questions on ordination by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrancourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Castro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. Council, the ordinance is hereby ordained. 
Order that the City of Brockton grants to 28 Petronelli LLC an easement over Petronelli Way, formerly Ward Street, to maintain the existing balconies so long as the balconies exist on the premises known as 28 Petronelli Way, Brockton. And further, that the City Council authorizes the Mayor to execute the grant of easement and agreement and to take other action as necessary to carry out the terms, purposes, and conditions of the same. In Council March 25th, 2019, ready to refer to Standing Committee on Real Estate, that report was favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. Azak? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Davenport? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGarry? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. Order is hereby adopted. Order that the mayor and our real estate custodian be authorized to accept on behalf of the city of Brockton a parcel of land containing approximately 1.4121 acres located at and known as Plot 30 Bridge Street, more particularly described as parcel identification number 128-337 and Council March 25th, 2019. Ready to refer to Standing Committee on Real Estate and Finance, that report was favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 10 in the affirmative. Orders hereby adopted. Order the lifting of restriction of parcel ID <clears throat> 096-121, which is the lot next to 16 Battle Street, owner Valentino R. Gomes, uh, favorable as amended, in council September 23rd, 2019, ready to refer to Standing Committee on Real Estate. That report was favorable as amended. Councilor Castro. Thank you, good evening. Um, I serve as the chair of the Real Estate Committee and at our meeting at the end of October, this was approved by a vote of four to one. And I was the dissenting voter, and I will be a dissenting voter this evening. And I just wanted to point out, the Abutters Lot Program was passed by the City Council in July of 1998 to provide abutting tax landowners, excuse me, with the first opportunity to acquire an abutting parcel that the city acquired by tax title. Um, and, and the purpose of it is to reclaim vacant lots to enhance residential properties to beautify once blighted space and to make the city neighborhoods healthier and happier places to live. At that time, um, both our state delegation and some of the city councilors were very concerned about density and the, the uh, increasing density of houses. And so for that matter, they created this program and this property was approved in 2002. It was one of the first properties to go into the Abutters Lot Program. I, I support leaving it in the abutters lot program. My comments are not personal, I, and, and I don't believe that, that we, we have to live with the consequences of what we do. And I believe in the integrity of this program. I think it's a great idea. I think it should continue. And I think to, to vote to, to lift this restriction tonight just kind of guts the whole program. I think we're gonna have the floodgates open with everyone else trying to take their property out of the abutters lot program. Um, there was a mistake made, as is often the case in Brockton. There was no enforcement. The abutters lot program requires that someone who obtains a lot through the program has to incorporate it into their deed so that the property that they acquire becomes part of a single parcel. And since I came onto the council, we repeatedly see that that is not happening. Homeowners are not doing it. Unfortunately, there is not enforcement by the city of Brockton to make sure that they follow up on that. And so that's too bad. This lot should have been incorporated into the existing lot um, of the person who owns it, and that would have been the end of this. So I'm speaking out, hoping that this, this um, lifting this restriction will fail. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Any other councilors? Councilor, Mr. Easy. President, um, this lot is in Ward 7, and I would just like to remind everybody that this lot has been before us numerous times uh, in request to lift the restriction. We have researched it. We've worked with the law department, the assessor's office, and actually when uh, now Mayor Rodriguez was Councilor Rodriguez and he was the chair of the real estate committee last year, we voted on this to lift it, and he actually gave the... Um, person a dollar amount 
for the purchase. So I'm just, um, I serve on, I've served on the real estate committee now for numerous years and this matter has been before us. This lot was not part of the abutters program. The abutters program, I believe that three, it's 3,000 square feet requirement. This lot is over 5,000 square feet. Uh, we, we tried to find out why a restriction was placed on it. Um, we weren't able to get any information. I've worked with the clerk's office. We've worked once again with the law department. Um, it's just a, a large size lot to keep empty and the owner of this lot has worked has tried to um, work with us to f um, have the restriction lifted. So I hope my colleagues will support this because to leave this lot empty just doesn't make any sense. This, um, this owner ha lives right next to it. He's looking to beautify it. He keeps it clean, he keeps it in order. So, um, but I, you know, I can only speak of what we've been working on and that's we've researched this and this was not part of the abutters program. We, we to this, um, it was uh, Councillor Charlie Logan who had pl uh, placed this restriction and he was not here to answer why it was placed on there, we've, we've tried. Um, so once again, my colleagues make, you know, it's your decision, but you need to know the right information. It's not, it was not part of the abutters program. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor at large, McGarry followed by Farwell, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I was on the council in 1998, so the conversation did trigger, trigger some memories. Uh, through the council to, to the chair to uh, council from Ward 4. Uh, at that time, the issue was on lot sizes and 5,000 square feet were grandfathered at that time. Those that were not a part of a property or being held by, by a family uh, and were being built on routinely and, and developers were going around and pick, trying to find any 5,000 square foot lot that was, not gr that was grandfathered to build on. We were trying to adhere to the newer zoning uh, changes for lot size at that time and trying to beautify and keep some green space in the city because everyone at that time was trying to build anything they could on any size lot that was within uh, the legal limit. Um, so uh, if it was done by Mr. Logan, Councilor Logan back in those days, I'm sure he had, it, had uh, great reasons to, to put that property in. He was uh, always on top of that. He was very involved in, in the uh, DW field projects and was very uh, conservation conscious at that time, very involved in those, those different uh, issues. So uh, I just wanted to provide a little, um, a little historical background to what was going on in 1998 and what the thought of, of the council at that time as we were trying to protect green space in the city at that time. Thank you very much, Council. Thank it was very helpful. Thank you. Council Fowell, please. Uh, Mr. President, this has been before us before. Um, in 2002, our colleagues made an informed decision to sell this lot for $3,400 uh, with a deed restriction. The owner who took possession of that land did so willingly, agreed to the deed restriction, was very happy to pay taxes all these years on a mere $3,400 valuation on the land but now wants us to release the deed restriction because I dare say a house lot in Brockton is probably worth anywhere from eighty dollars to $100,000. So we will have sold him a piece of property which he now wants to convert over to a buildable lot and make a substantial profit. I haven't read and I have absolutely no evidence that the council back in 2002 did the wrong thing. It seems to me that we as counselors should honor the work and the decisions made by prior councils unless there is some overwhelming public reason why we shouldn't do so. This to me, and, and I'm gonna call it the way I see it, is pure favoritism. We, think of the people who might have purchased that lot if they thought it was going to be buildable, but instead we put a deed restriction on it. Now, I understand there have been meetings with the law department. I've spoken to the solicitor, and I'm not a lawyer, but he's concerned about, I think the term is unjust enrichment, that if, if you put restrictions on a lot that negated the number of people that might have bid on that lot, and all of the other people who have purchased lots from the city who have a deed restriction, they want the same benefit. They'd like to come forward, perhaps, and have those restrictions lifted. So. I don't see how this benefits the city. 
someone might say, well, he's willing to pay, and I don't know what the amendment is. I've heard the word, uh, I've heard the figure $22,000. Is that the going price for negating the work of a prior counsel? Is that what we're all about? Now, I ran on no favoritism, and I'm not about to vote tonight to turn around and let a gentleman buy a, a lot for $3,400, we lift the restriction, and then he might turn around and sell it for $100,000. i am just not going to do it. Thank you, Councillor. For those that sit on the uh, Real Estate Committee, I'd like to know, did Attorney Solicitor uh, Nazarella participate or provide any documentation during that hearing? Council. Mr. President, yes, he did. He sent a communication. I believe he sent a letter to the chair the that chairwoman. evening, but he wasn't present um, there. He wasn't present at the meeting. Um, once again, I, I understand how everybody feels, and by no means is this any sort of favoritism on my part. I do not know the person who wants to purchase it, did not know him before. He was one of my constituents. Um, I'm just speaking in terms of the time that has been spent on this and the research that we've put into it. And with all res due respect, I respect all previous counselors and future counselors, but um, it's, I believe it's our job to do um, the research and do what's right. And to me to have a lot this size right off of North Main Street, I mean, it's not in a neighborhood, it's right off of North Main Street. Um, I, I just don't know how we're going to, um, you know, how long it's going to stay empty for. So I've just, uh, my decision is made after much um, research, uh, talking to our different prof um, department heads, and that is why I'm going to support this. But each counselor is, uh, and with all respect to uh, um, Councillor Charlie Logan, who has passed. So with, um, it is by all means no disrespect to him, but um, maybe this will teach us to, when we make decisions or we put restrictions or whatever we do as counselors now, Good. that we Good. make sure that there uh, it is well explained why we're doing things. Oh, Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Mr. President. Uh, Councilor Ianeri, please. Yeah, if I might, because I, I sit as a member of the Real Estate uh, Committee, and I wasn't involved in this uh, particular issue last year because I wasn't on the committee, but I, I was this year. Um, and when we met with the gentleman and his attorney, uh, Jake Creed, and, and discussed the um, situation at hand, and I heard information coming uh, to me from the uh, City Council from Ward 7, um, I, I do not find a, a problem um, with this. Um, I do take a little bit personal touch to hearing that now it's all of a sudden we're favoritism. It seems like if we're not you know, playing favoritism, we're working deals behind closed doors, as I was accused of doing uh, some time ago from uh, a couple of councils. Um, that doesn't help us when we're trying to do something, I think, in the best interest of the city. Um, I realize things happen, and there's probably going to be things that, that are going to come back someday and might bite me, I, and I'll be too old to know that I got bit, because they'll say, oh, it happened, what, three, 17 years ago when I was counselor. Okay, it did. But now we're talking 17 years later, and something different is going to happen where this gentleman wants to purchase that piece of property. I spoke to him, and, and he's looking to build a home. I, I believe a counselor from Ward 7 can verify that, that he wants to have uh, the land and, and the home there for his, um, for his family. I, I don't think that he's out to make a buck. I think what he's trying to do is take care of his family. So, I mean, with that being said, I'm, I'm going to support it um, because I think I'm trying to do what I think is <clears throat> in the best interest of, uh, of uh, the people of the city as well. And keep in mind, a lot this size You've got grandfathered lots. I have a grandfather lot on Wyoming Ave that's nowhere near the size. There's no <coughs> size back or front, and there's a house on it right now. You know, and that's what, that's what we allow things to happen. Everybody was grandfathered 20, 30, 40 years ago. Now something like this is before us, and this gentleman wants to do something to help his family. It's all of a sudden, oh, we just showed him some favoritism. I don't believe that, and I don't think that's what, that's what this committee was out to do at all. We're trying to work in the best interest of the people. So appreciate you listening to me, Mr. Thank President. You, Thank Council you, Councilor Uh Councilor Lally, followed by Nick Castro, please. Thank you. I want to say I'm also a member of the Real Estate Committee. Uh, I will be voting for this, uh, as with the, you know, the rest of the members of the committee. Uh, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't think any of us knew Mr. Gomes before this started. I don't think it was a case of, oh, we know you, we'll help you out. It was a case of a, you know, a prior council making a decision and then this council having, you know, having its own decision to make. Do we stick with that decision or do we overturn it? Uh, we have the ability to overturn. It's not, 
uh, it's not necessarily, I, I don't think it would be a, a slap in the face if, if you know, we do something as this body, this legislative session, that 20 years in the future needs to be changed. Times change, things evolve. If you tell me that whatever this council has done is, is locked in forever and ever, well, I've, you know, I'm, I'm 22, I've got 80 years of nothing to look forward to. You, you might know? still be here in 80 years, Jack, we never know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to beat the dean's record. But uh, that's, that's why I didn't run for school committee. But uh, in, in all seriousness, this is a very large you know, space, uh, not something that you'd typically find in the abutters program. Uh, it was not what I believe it was set out to do, but these are, these are problems that we, that we have throughout the city. And they are problems, as the, as the chair, Councilor Nicastro, has said, that we should not have these properties were supposed to be merged. You know, there are properties all over the city that were supposed to be put together as one lot that never were. The problem is they're still not, and now we have, you know, now we have a decision to make. But this is a gentleman, as Councillor Ian Erie said, who's, who's doing this for his family. Uh, he didn't fly in here from the middle of nowhere to profiteer. He's, he's not gonna be here one moment and gone the next. Uh, I, think it, I think it has merit, and I think that these lots if, if we need to revisit these lots, whether it be you know, on a case-by-case -case basis or just in general, uh, that, that might be something we have to do. That's not something that, that we as a body can shy away from. It's, it's gonna be our responsibility, just as it was uh, the responsibility of the council who instated it. Thank you. Thank you, council. Are there any, um, any councilors that haven't spoken before we do a follow-up with Councilor Nicastro? We'll go to Councilor Nicastro then, please. Thank you. I just wanted to add that I spoke to City Solicitor Nessarella both the day of the of the uh, of our real estate committee meeting and also the morning after, and he he did not support doing this. And I also spoke with the assessor John O'Donnell immediately before our committee meeting, and he also did not support doing this. And the final thing I wanted to say is that um, our ordinance section two three o two, which sets forth the abutters lot program says in A that regulations for the program shall be promulgated and periodically published and rules and regulations shall be approved by the mayor and the city council. At this time, all we have is this ordinance. Maybe it's time for us to make some rules and regulations to lay out parameters or you know reasons that are serious enough that we, we would consider releasing lots from these restrictions. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Council. And I, I did, with the clerk's help, I did look at the minutes, and it does reflect that the law department here in the city is, was not in favor of that. So thank you for sharing that. Any a follow up for you, Council? Yeah. Follow, follow up, please. All right. My last comment, colleagues, is we're here to do what's best for the city of Brockton. Those of you who support this, explain to me how selling a piece of property to someone for $3,400 and then taking the deed restriction off, making that property worth eighty to $100,000 benefits the public. And all of this talk about he wants to do something for his family, is there any restriction that it has to be maintained or owned by this person, or could he put it up for sale? I keep hearing, oh, he's going to do something for his family. He wants to move his family here. There's nothing that prevents this gentleman from selling that piece of property as a buildable lot if you lift the restriction. So where is the public benefit? Where are we protecting the interests of taxpayers? We sold it for 3,400, now we're gonna make it worth 100 or $80,000, and that's a good deal for the people who live here because it was their property when we sold it. It wasn't the city council's property, it wasn't the mayor's property, it was owned by the city of Brockton, the people who live here. So forgive me for being a little passionate, but I can see a deal when I, when I have it right in front of me. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Azak, please. Mr. President, I don't, you know, want to go on and on with this because once again, this has been going on for two years. But um, the, once, right now, as far as tax revenue for the city of Brockton, it is not bringing in much tax revenue on this unbuildable lot. Once Mr. Gomes, and if he, 
does um, we do lift the restriction and he does pay the difference that is owed over all these years which is a figure that came from the assessor's office and um, he will be able to put a multifamily for his home uh, for his family and it will bring in more tax revenue to the city of Brockton maybe that's how he's giving back to the city but um, just to go back to the attor attorney Nazarella and the city solicitor the reason they're not in favor of this is because we have this situation throughout the city and um, the fear of lifting this restriction is going to cause um, more of these lots of people going to come in for restriction and that's how it was explained to me but because of our fear, fear to deal with situations we're going to penalize this person um, uh, you know I put my faith in our residents and I put out my faith that they are going to do what's best for the city and uh, this person owns the house right next door to this mm -hmm. lot he um, lives there he maintains it I don't think his um, you know maybe I have I, I trust my judgment people but he wants to build a home there for his family and I hope he's doing the right thing and whichever way this goes this evening it's um, I have no problem in supporting it because I did my research thank you thank you council just point of information and I know some of us have been here a while uh, Council Ianeri myself Council Cruz um, former uh, city solicitor Jim D'Ambrose, now the ex uh, current solicitor Philip Nazarella have always given us that same viewpoint and our own legislative, former legislative counsel and uh, now Judge Mark Gilday would say that as well. And I know that our former colleague from Ward 4, Paul Stadinsky, had brought an issue before this board uh, in the past where someone just did exactly that, got it relatively cheap under the abutters program got it removed and then flipped it for a hefty profit. So it has been discussed in the past. Um, with that being said now, does anybody that's not on the real estate committee need us to read the proposed amendment? Do you need to know the amendment? You should read it. Clerk, Mr. Clerk, if you don't mind, we'll, we'll, the, 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 we have to take a, a, a vote. A uh, question is on the amendment, but let's get make sure everybody understands the amendment, please. I hereby motion to amend the foregoing order with the condition of the payment of $22,010 upon lifting the conditions from the property. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. So that's what's before us right now. The question is on the amendment as stated by the clerk. If you're in favor of the amendment as stated, kindly raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you're opposed, kindly raise your hand. So the amendment passes. So now the question is on adoption as amendment, amended uh, by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? No. Lally? Yes. McGeary? No. Nicastro? No. Sullivan? No. That's five in the affirmative, four in opposition. Passes. Five to four vote, he passes. The, uh, the order is adopted as amended, five to four vote. Go on to the next one. Go on to uh, number 37, please. Order that the Brockton City Council, acting on behalf of the City of Brockton, does hereby grant a perpetual right of easement to the Massachusetts Electric Company for consideration of one dollar to construct, reconstruct, repair, replace, add to, maintain, and operate for the transmission of high and low voltage electric current and for the transmission of intelligence, an underground electric distribution system located in, through, under, over, across, and upon a parcel of land situated on the northerly side of Lincoln Street and southerly side of Church Street, be it designated as Lot 51 on the City of Brockton Tax Assessors Plot 110. For the Finance Committee. Order that the mayor and or the treasurer collector be authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to convey the property consisting of 2,009 square feet, located and known as Part 16-30 Center Street, Parcel ID 152-022 to Gregory Jamo, 65 Manchester Street, Brockton, for the purchase price of $1,000. Said property to be sold under the Abutter Lot Program and to be sold with a permanent non-buildable restriction. Said property shall also merge with a budding lot of the purchaser. Referred to uh, the real estate committee, please. 
audit acceptance and expenditures in the amount of $270,000 from the U.S. Department of Justice, Office of Justice Programs, Office for Victims of Crime, Fiscal 2019, Law Enforcement Based Victim Specialist Program Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 29, Law Enforcement Based Victim Specialist Program Grant Fund. For the Finance Committee, please. An appropriation of $2,258,845 from unappropriate estimate receipts for fiscal 20 of the general fund, increase in Chapter 78 to net school spending, and further appropriate $1,178,496 from net school spending to non-net school spending. For the Finance Committee, please. Transfer of $4,500,000 from health insurance employee benefits to non-net school spending. That is referred to Finance Committee. An appropriation of $790,000 for an unappropriate estimate receipts for fiscal 20 of the general fund to various departments. For the Finance Committee, please. Acceptance of expenditures in the amount of $68,000 for the Mass Department of Environmental Protection Sustainable Materials Recovery Program Grant to Department of Public Works Refuse Division Sustainable Material Recovery Program Grant Fund. It's referred to Finance Committee. Accepted and expenditures of additional subrecipient grant award in the amount of $13,380.64 from the Plymouth County District Attorney's Office, Fiscal 17 Violent Gang and Gun Crime Reduction Program, Project Safe Neighborhood Grant to Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 17 Violent Gang and Gun Crime Reduction Program, Project Safe Neighborhood Grant Fund. Referred to Finance Committee. Appropriation of the State Legislative Earmark, any amount of $50,000 from the Department of Public Health Bureau of Substance Addiction Services Legislative Earmark Funding to Mayor's Office Legislative Earmark Funding Fund. Referred to Finance Committee. Mr. President. Counselor. Uh, forgive me for interrupting, but can we just go back to number 44? FY17, is that is that an accurate... Uh, I believe that's how the audit come in, isn't it? Uh, I mean, that's three fiscal years ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't believe that's the script is there. I believe that's how it was submitted. Yeah. But we can discuss that and vet that out at the right. Finance Committee. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Audit that the sum of $5,457,233 is appropriated to pay various capital costs as set forth, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, the cemetery department, $650,000. Fire department, $1,260,000. Information technology, total $448,000. Water department, total $1,126,233. And parks and recreation, total $1,973,000. For the finance committee, please. Audit and acceptance expenditures <clears throat> in the amount of $5,000 for the Mass Department of Environmental Protection, Mass Electric Vehicle Incentive Program Grant, the Department of Public Works, Mass Electric Vehicle Incentive Program Grant Fund. That is going to be referred to the Finance Committee. Do we have any counselor's Mr. recognition? Counselor Ian Airy. Mr. President, by mind, I have a, a motion to accept two late files. Second. Motion on the floor, property second for late file. All in favor? I'll oppose, motion carries. The clerk, will, the clerk will read them, then I will ask for a, a suspension of the rules to act on them this evening. Thank, Thank you, Councilor. One of these was the- Council, is this recent? relative to the Huntington School? Yes. Yeah, well, this is just, uh, take a one minute recess. Can I take just a one minute recess, please? Again, thank you. Okay, we have a communication from the mayor in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Laws recommending the city council rescind the following appropriation of $150,000 that was in city council and approved on July 22, 2019 from available funds, free cash to school department, $150,000, in order to fund a complete feasibility study for the Huntington Therapeutic Day School. Accept and place on file. We have a communication from the uh, CFO recommending the same. Accept and place on file. And we have the order. The order of precision is accepted and placed on file. Okay. 
Now we have a communication from the mayor in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Laws recommending the following appropriation of $150,000 from unappropriated estimate receipts for fiscal 20 of the general fund to school department in order to fund a complete feasibility study for the Huntington Therapeutic Day School. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have an order of appropriation of $150,000 from the unappropriate estimate receipts for fiscal 20 of the general fund to the school department. Councilor Neri. If I might, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. We suspend the rules and act on this one this evening. This motion on the floor was properly seconded to uh, act on the suspension of rules and vote on it tonight. All in favor? All opposed, our motion carries. Yes, I'll take care of. Um, so now the matter is going to come before us with a roll call vote, please. Mr. President, if you could, I'm just a little confused on. So these are two orders? First one was a rescission order. And then. And we're rescinding an appropriation? Through, through the chair. It's, it was rescinded, taking the money from one fund and changing it over to take the money from another fund. It was still for the same purpose. Okay. Uh, Can you vote on the rescission order? Hmm? One a vote. Is that? Can there be two votes then? One on the rescission one order. One should be a vote on the rescission and one should be a vote on the hmm. second one, yeah. So there's going to be a roll call vote and it's uh, relative to rescinding the first order. The dollar amount doesn't change, the purpose doesn't change, it's just coming from a different avenue. Yep. So we'll do That's one vote, the first vote will be on the rescission, and then the second vote will be on the order itself, which will take it from the different fund. And excuse me, on the motion, just so I know, the rescission, what fund was that one from? The rescission was from the, uh, let's Free cash, see. right? Yeah. So we're returning this money to free cash? Yeah, well, you're not going to use it, so it's... And I take it that I'm just confu confused because I've, in my 14 years, I've never voted to rescind a, uh, uh, an appropriation. Then the appropriation just wouldn't be used. Uh, just because we appropriate the money doesn't mean it has to be used. I don't. I, I, I'm a little confused on us rescinding the, uh, the appropriation. That's a follow. -up. Yeah, the Department of Revenue certifies free cash Correct. every year. They don't want us to take money out of it because they are in the process of certifying that. So it was an it was a technical error by the CFO to, to put free cash. It should have been unappropriated receipts. And the only reason I know that is that I happened to engage in a conversation with the auditor about a range of things. And she said that this was going to be coming before us. And I kind of knew that from prior experience. That's all. Any other questions before us? Because this is a unique situation. Any questions? So then there's a matter before us, a roll Excuse, call vote. Uh, on the motion, motion, I'm sorry, I, and I don't mean to belabor. Do we really have a need for the rescission without, uh, we could vote on the second one and not the first and get a better explanation from the CFO on the rescission? I'm just uncomfortable with something that we've never done in 14 years. The second one I understand, we're taking the money out of unappropriated, but it wouldn't affect, the first one shouldn't affect the second one. Right. They actually took the money Council, we oh, can do whatever the will of the council is. I just, I, I mean, I, I would rather have a conversation with the CFO. Relative to the first relative matter? Relative to the first matter. Okay. The second, I'm very comfortable with that we're going to be taking the money and it will still be available. It's, it's very just, reasonable. In my 14 years and other years around, I never voted to rescind a, uh, again, it would just be unused I concur. appropriation. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd like to make a motion to, to send the first one to finance. And the second one, I'm very comfortable voting on this evening, so that the school, so the money is available. Second. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna retract the accepted and placed on file relative to the order. So motion on the floor now. This is for the rescission order. So motion on the floor, properly second, to send that to FENCOM for purposes of having Mr. Claxton come before us. Everybody in favor of that, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, so that carries. That's sent to finance with an invited to Mr. Claxton. The second matter, which. The council from Ward 3 has asked that we take under suspension is relative to what was read into the record, and it's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. Basak? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGarry? Yes. McCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's 10 in the affirmative. That, uh, that, ma that order is ordained. Um, no other agenda items, no other late files? 
I do want to uh, thank uh, everybody yesterday that participated in the uh, Veterans Day Parade. Um, of course, uh, Mayor Rodriguez is a veteran of the U.S. Navy. Uh, new colleague, Jeffrey Thompson, Attorney Thompson is also uh, U.S. Navy. Um, it was a wonderful day in Brockton. David Farrell, the Executive Director of Veterans Affairs, always does a yeoman's job on that. We want to thank the parade staff, ROTC, Junior ROTC, and the Brockton High Band. It was a beautiful day, and it was uh, very fitting to have it at the War Memorial. Years past, we didn't have it there, but it was really a great day. So thank you for everybody that was there. Um, anything else before us tonight? Councilor Yaneri, please. Uh, Mr. President, if I, if I might, um, I'd, like to, I'd like to make a request um, to you, sure, Mr. President, Mayor-elect, <laughs> um, and I'm asking that at our first meeting in December, which would be Monday evening, uh, December the 9th, that at the conclusion, I think it's time for us to have an executive session uh, for all of us to come together and you make uh, make the list of who you wish to have there present with us, but we need to have a follow-up to know where we are at with this Lopes case. Um, it was a little bit of a, a campaign um, ache, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it probably would have been. Um, but in any case, I think, um, you know, we need to know just where it stands and, and where we're going. Um, within the next 55, 52, 53 days, however days you're counting, uh, unfortunately it's going to be on your lap one way or another. And um, uh, we, we've, got to, we've got to know just so we know as councilors what direction we're going with it because it's um, well, well overdue and we have never really been brought up to speed. I don't think you disagree with that uh, as a councilor. Uh, at any time. So I'm asking you um, to do that, I think, in, in the, the benefit of all of us, um, you know, they're serving this city right now with, um, with that type of a bill hanging over our head. Um, we've, we've got to have a clear understanding of what direction it's Duly going. Duly noted, Councilor, and we will work with our legislative uh, attorney, Resnick, Resnick, to meet master on laws for proper filing. We'll have the invited guests there. I think it's, uh, it's, it's a good suggestion, and we'll recognize that, and we'll do that, and I'll work with Attorney Resnick on that. Um, and I, I also, um, when I stated at the opening, um, Councilor Beauregard and Councilor Derencourt weren't here, um, but I wanted to, first of all, thank you for running uh, for office this year, and thank you for your public service. Thank you very much. Um, and, and just one other thing, Councilor, just to let you know, um, as the Council President and also, I guess, as the Mayor-elect, under the council's recognition, I want to thank our three state representatives, Claire Cronin, Michelle Dubois, and Jerry Cassidy. Uh, I was fortunate enough to go to the state house last week and meet for a half hour with the Speaker of the House uh, and our three uh, reps. Uh, and I made it clear to the Speaker that we need additional funding uh, here in Brock and as we move forward. And it, it does look very promising for the 140 million spread over 10 years for our education. Long overdue, but we're on the right track. So we will continue to work collectively and as a team to make a better Brockton. So with that being said, is there anything else before us? Councilor? Mr. President, Councilor. Um, I would like to go back to number 36 and I would like to move for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail. Second. Number 36, uh, yep. So there's a motion, it was probably second. Reconsideration, hopes it does not prevail. All in favor of reconsideration, please raise your hand. All opposed? Reconsideration does not prevail. Thank you, Council. We'll duly note that. Anything else before us? One other thing is I, I noticed fall behind. That clock hasn't been changed. We'll get that changed by the next meeting, believe me. Uh, drive safe. Meeting's adjourned. Okay.